we walked into a botanica and interviewed a witch. So do you believe in the devil? You have to. That's like the main thing of it. Santa Muerte is very famous. Okay, that's the Haitian voodoo gods. As we were walking around the botanica, she shared what each item does. Can you explain the double action reversible? Oh, that is perfect for like if someone is trying to do harm to you. We even got to see her personal altar onto which, her false which, god. Um, I know we went to a Haitian voodoo spot and they had one specific deity that like was the main one. The main ones are always the seven African powers. I've seen videos and I've seen pastors casting out demons. They say it's the power of the Holy Spirit. Do you believe in the power of the Holy Spirit? Oh, of course. You have to be, You have to believe in all three. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So as the door was opening for her to hear the gospel, I prayed for her and received words the light on of knowledge. Her. You've been very tired and very like a lot of weight on your back. And when I was praying for you, did you feel something? Yeah. What did you feel? Peace. Prophecies. And he went up on the cross, died. And all we have to do is follow him. Family, we are right in front of the Botanica. It's a Mexican witchcraft store. It's where people do Santa Muerte. Back before I came to Christ, I've been to one of these stores. I've spoken to witches. I've spoken to people inside these stores. So whenever you see one of these things and it says Botanica, and it has like a Virgin Mary in the front or a Catholic saint, it's actually demonic. What they're doing is they're using the Catholic statues. They switch it up by worshiping their deity or demon, fallen angel, in place of that statue. That's how they do it in Voodoo, Santeria, Santa Muerte, the whole nine. So we're gonna go in there and we're gonna see if we can explain some stuff and maybe get an interview with a uh, Santero. So let's see. We're actually inside of the Botanica. You guys are Mexican, right? Yes. By the way, guys, she does not want to be on video. So we're going to do like an interview and like a, a tour of um, husband and wife, but they're not gonna, their face is not going to be in it just out of respect, which I agree. So are you a Christian? I am considered a Christian Catholic. Okay. Okay. You're Catholic. I've realized that like a lot of the Catholicism is intertwined when it comes to Santeria, Santa Muerte, Voodoo and all that stuff. And I was just actually just saying that on camera, like you guys take the, the saints and then worship another deity behind the statue of the saint. Is it the same thing in Santa Muerte? It is kind of uh, what we do. Um, we don't feel humble enough to go to straight to God to ask for our prayers. So we represent them as a messenger to they could go and ask him for what we pray for, like Santa Muerte, La Virgen de Guadalupe, San Judas, San Lazaro. So you go to other saints. So you guys see what she said. She said that they don't feel humble enough to go straight to God. You see, the Bible says that we have direct access to God, that the veil has been torn because of what Jesus Christ did on the cross. Jesus Christ dying on the cross opened up reconciliation, redemption, and relationship with God now. We don't have to go to a high priest or a prophet anymore to hear from God. We have access to the holies of holies where we can experience the tangible presence of God and speak directly to him, communication, and he'll speak directly to us. So we have relationship with God now because of what Jesus Christ did. And that's why Jesus Christ is the only way to the Father, right? To, to heaven. It's through Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, and the light. That will go to God okay. for you. Okay, okay. So these are all rosaries, obviously. And then, okay. The red one does represent protection of evil. Yeah, I've seen that. The evil eye, right? Yes. And then the rosaries, are, are they also protection? Yes. Uh, the rosaries, they keep from protection from evil and negative energy that we do see a lot of. And it also protects us from envious. There's always people that are jealous. Yes. And that affects our life. And the Haitian voodoo. So as you guys can see, in almost every witchcraft store, they have rosaries. Why is that? Because of idolatry. In Catholicism, people pray to saints, Mary, John, Lazarus, Peter, thinking that because they speak to them, they'll bring the petitions or requests to God. That is going through another source rather than going straight to God because of what he's done. Jesus Christ died on that cross so that we can have direct access to God. For us to go to another saint or another spirit or using another object to get access to God because we, we don't feel worthy enough is actually perversion of God's word. That's actually taking what Jesus Christ did on the cross and discrediting it. Jesus Christ died on the cross for you to have direct access to God through what he did. We don't have to go through any saint. We don't have to go through any spirit. What happens is a lot of pure-hearted Catholic people pray to these saints thinking that they're actually speaking to one of the saints 
from the Bible when in reality they're making petitions, requests, sowing money, lighting candles, and spending time onto demonic spirits. When the Spanish, the French, and the English colonized different parts of the Caribbean, like Haiti, Puerto Rico, Cuba, Dominican Republic, they brought Catholicism to the land, forced it on the people, on the Africans and Indians, the native Indians. And what those Africans and native Indians did was they began to worship their deities, their gods, that they've been worshiping for hundreds of years, but put it behind the saints, the, the statues. So what they would do is they would bow down to the statue of Peter or bow down to the statue of John or bow down to Mary and they would do it so that they wouldn't be killed, raped, they wouldn't be taken away from their family. They would do it in obedience to their slave owners, but in their heart, they'd be worshiping their deities still, which are demons, fallen angels, false gods. That's why you see in a lot, in a lot of these witchcraft stores, they have Catholic saints, rosaries, and it's the same thing in the Catholic church idolatry. Idolatry is not good. Do not do it. Repent from it. Spot. We've seen that sometimes they'll take like the rosary or like an evil or one of these and they'll bless it. Like they'll put like cigar. Like I've seen them put it in some like water stuff and it smells really water, good. Yeah. It it's smells, holy like, like water perfume. and perfumes and herbs that helps the protection last a little bit longer than it usually does. And I've seen like, like an old woman like smoking a cigar and she'll like. There's a lot of cleansings with the tobacco. The tobacco is good for a lot of cleansing spiritually and it opens a lot of your third eye. So I want to say this, guys. Third eye is perversion of the Word of God. So there is no third eye that we can access to get more spiritual. We have a spirit man. We have a soul and we have a body. A lot of people are spiritually seeking things because in their soul, they're encountering spirits that want to take over their vehicle. Now, it can be angelic spirits that are working on behalf of Yahweh to bring them to Christ in relationship to receive the Holy Spirit. Or it could be demonic spirits that are working on them to get them to worship false gods, idolatry. Idolatry is literally when you worship a false god. God hates witchcraft and God hates idolatry. Rebellion is as witchcraft. Stubbornness is as idolatry. The word of God says that in the book of 1 Samuel. So when people take cigar smoke and they bless something, it's already demonic. You see, the reason they use cigar smoke is because back in, in the days of the sla of slavery, where a lot of these, these um, paganistic religions come from, like Voodoo, Santeria, Santa Muerte, they used to smoke the cigars, which is already it's harm to your temple using the tobacco as a ritual to summon a demon. So a lot of these demons, when I used to be in Voodoo and in Santeria, Palo Mayambe, Santa Muerte, all these things, when I was in it and I would go to the witch or the warlock, the Voodoo priest, the Santero, whatever, the guy or the woman you have to go to to get answers, they would have to smoke a cigar and drink alcohol before they can do any reading, before they could do anything, because they would tell you, I need to smoke and I need to drink and do my ritual before the spirit will enter me to be able to speak. And they would call these spirits ancestors ancestral spirits, um, you know, like Chango, Alegua, Legba, like there's different spirits that people would call upon, like the spirit of the Santa Muerte. They have to smoke in order for that spirit to come in. Why? Some of you are like, why do they have to smoke? Because they have to create a demonic atmosphere inside and outside of their temple for that spirit to gain power and access to be able to manifest inside of them. A lot of the times they think it's the spirit, the demonic spirit or the ancestral spirit that's entering them. It's not. It's the spirit that's inside of them, the demon, that's manifesting because of their sin, because of them hurting their temple. You see, when you talk to a lot of these voodoo priests and witches and warlocks, when you speak to them and you ask them, do you smoke? Do you drink? They'll tell you, no, I don't smoke. I don't even drink myself. But when I have to access the spirit, the spirit will drink a lot, smoke a lot. And it's because the demon wants to do harm to the temple that God has given us who are created in his image and likeness. The devil can't stand humans because we literally have the potential of having relationship with God through Jesus Christ. The devil can't do that. The devil's done. He can't repent. So the devil, the demons, the Satan, satanic kingdom, they want you to smoke. They want you to drink. And that's why in a lot of witchcraft, they smoke weed, they smoke cigarettes, they smoke cigars, they harm their temple, they create a demonic atmosphere for a demon to dwell. We're supposed to create a heavenly atmosphere of glory when we pray, when we worship, when we praise, when we read our word, when we're around other congregates, saints. That's when the presence of God comes and we don't got to smoke and drink nothing. It's straight faith in Jesus Christ and true worship in spirit and truth that allows the atmosphere to be heaven. If, if you're smoking and you're drinking, you might need to repent of creating that demonic atmosphere inside and around your temple 
and give your life to Christ. The candles, double action reversibles. Can you explain the double action reversible? Oh, well, that is perfect for like if someone is trying to do harm to you and you don't know exactly who it is, but you feel it. You know when someone something's wrong. So you light up this candle and it helps to reverse whatever other people want. So as you can see, the Bible says to love your enemy. The Bible says to bless those who curse you, do right to those who despitefully use you. You know, the Bible is very clear about that. You read that in the book of Matthew, right? Chapter six, it talks about how we're supposed to treat our enemies. You know, Jesus Christ, Christ taught the opposite of what they teach you in witchcraft. In witchcraft, it's light this candle up so that you can reverse it and whatever they're doing to you will fall on them. That's witchcraft. That's control. The Bible says, forgive your enemies. The Bible says, pray for those who curse you, who, who use you. Help them. Bless them. You see, that's the way we love. You see, in witchcraft, there is no love. It's straight defensive. I'm going to defend myself and send an attack back to you. And that's how these witches and warlocks get money. Because when people go in to get a reading, they'll tell them things about their their past that's spot on you see demons they know about your past but they don't know about your future you see a demon cannot prophesy accurately about your future they can only assume using the information they've accumulated in the spirit realm through generations in the past they can assume what's going to happen in the future and through your agreement it can actually happen but they don't know for sure only god does yahweh he knows the future the past the present he's all-knowing but demons satan his entire kingdom they are not so that's why when you go to these witches and warlocks they'll use the information from the past to get your faith to start increasing and then they'll lie to you and tell you oh and, and by the way these witches and warlocks they don't even know they're lying they believe it too because they've been convinced to the point where they're a witch and a warlock and they'll sit there and say well your grandma's doing witchcraft on you your brother's doing witchcraft on you your baby dead and they'll put you into a state of confusion you'll begin because of deception to start believing what they said okay so what do i do what do i do oh you need to go get this candle and you need to light it up so it can go put be put back on them you need to pay this money to do this ritual you need to get this animal you need to get these fruits you need to do this you need to come back here in a few days and we're going to do a ritual in my backyard that's what they tell you and then you think in your mind wow now you have hate towards your brother or your sister or your friend or your relative that did nothing to you and you begin to start doing witchcraft on them and most of these people you begin to do witchcraft on they're they're not even saved themselves and they're an open door and they're getting hit. They're getting hit. They're getting hit. And then when bad things start happening to them, in your mind, you're like, yeah, because they were trying to do it on me when they were never trying to do anything on you. But that demon will use you through your rebellion, through your sin, because you already went to the warlock. You already went to the witch. You already in it to actually do his will. You see, the devil, these demons cannot do anything in the realm of the physical without a vessel that is in the physical. That's why they enter animals and humans. Repent. Give your life to Christ. Are these Buddha? This Buddha? So then Buddhists come in here too? Yes. Buddha is a lot of with uh, Catholic too, but a lot of Catholic churches don't put him up there because he's a very jealous person too. He wants to be only him worshipped. I have him over here. So you see what she just said. This lady, this witch, God bless her soul, she said Buddha's a jealous god. Buddha is not in Catholic churches too much because he's jealous and wants to be worshipped on his own. You see, in the Bible, it talks about jealousy, envies, and strifes, and how it's wrong. In the Bible, the Lord Jesus Christ teaches us to not be jealous, to not be envious, to not compare, to not compete. It says to love, put others before yourself, to not worry about what's going on with your brother and sister, but just to stay focused on God. You see the difference? You see how the devil will use these religions? And look, Buddhism. So some of you are like, oh, I thought Buddhism was good. No, it's not. Buddhism is demonic. She just, this lady who practices Buddhism, a full-blown witch with an altar, everything, a whole store, just told you guys, Buddha's jealous and wants to be worshiped on his own. Jealousy is demonic. It's not of God. Anybody who's not even saved can know that jealousy. Jealousy is wrong. Here too. And a lot of my customers love to put him money and they give his blessings and they make their Does the money bring like good, like good luck? Yes. Bruh, did you see that Buddha with all that money on him? Bro, the Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil. The Bible says you can't worship two gods. You can't worship God and worship mammon. That is straight demonic Buddha mammon worship. They got money glued or taped, whatever that was, to that Buddha statue. Buddha was a man. Buddha was a man that needed to go run some miles and, and get on a diet. Buddha needed to go vegan. B Buddha should have went keto. Buddha should have got his blood work done and, and got right because Buddha was a little was a little too fat. And trust me, I ain't gonna rub no Buddha to get no wishes and put no attach no money to a statue of a human that was once here that needed to, to work out and get on a diet. How not smart is that? Come on, bro. You don't have to even be saved to see that. Okay, that's the Haitian voodoo gods. And then you got, that's Jesus behind. That's, uh, that's Jude again. June again. Okay. So there's a lot of different cultures in this store, but it's... It's like, a, it's all around. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at, 
That's like the main thing of it. Yeah, Santa Muerte is very famous. Okay, and then, okay, so we got some more over here. Like, oh, there it goes. What's crazy about this is that we went to this store before we went to California, before um, the Santa Muerte was exposed, before I did that live with my brother, Pastor Mario. Like, we literally, um, we went to this store first, and, you know, we're, we're actually going to be releasing this video after all that because it's been in the, um, in, in the archives as far as editing. But man, we had a brother come to the service who actually repented of Santa Muerte. You know, he was Mexican and got delivered and his family is lit up on fire for Jesus. I used to worship the Santa Muerte. Is the Santa Muerte a demon? Yes, it's a demon. Man, Santa Muerte is demonic. It's literally the spirit of death. How could you worship the spirit of death? The Bible says that Jesus Christ overcame death because of what he did on the cross. Again, taking what Jesus did and saying, and pretty much just spitting on it. But by you worshiping Santa Muerte, you're spitting on what Jesus Christ did on the cross. Because of sin, we allowed death into the world when in the garden with Adam and Eve. And because of what Jesus Christ did on the cross, we have overcame death. The Bible says he has the keys to death and to hell. He don't need no Santa Muerte to whatever. No, he's the one that has control over death, over anything. No, Nobody dies on this earth unless he gives the green light. And he's an all-powerful, all-knowing, everywhere at once God. To worship the angel of death, the spirit of death, whatever you want to call it, is completely wrong, demonic, and some of you need to repent and actually give your life to Christ. And that's why the Catholic Church is, is one of the biggest deceptive religions ever because they're using idol worship, witchcraft, all these things, which is wrong, in the name of Jesus. That's the worst of the worst. That's being lukewarm. At least in voodoo and in Santeria, when they, the, the witches and warlocks that are straight up, but they say, look, I ain't even Catholic. I ain't Christian. Like the Satanists, they say, I'm straight up all the way for the devil. At least they're all the way. But when you got these witches and warlocks, oh yeah, I believe in Jesus. I'm Catholic. They've been deceived to think that they have some type of special information that most Christians don't have and that they're doing it the right way. That is straight deception. Because when they look at a Christian, they'll be like, oh, they worship Jesus. I do too. They just don't know what I know. I got this special mystery knowledge, just like Freemasonry. They got this special mystery knowledge that nobody has and it makes you feel important. That's witchcraft. That's control and you need to repent. The Catholic saints again, you got different saints and the African ones at the bottom, like you, like, like that's the Haitian. I've heard stories about like um, people that actually go to the water and um, like a mermaid will come out of the water. Yes, and, then, and, and then that is Yamaya. That's what I've heard of. And then when they um, when they get the power from the mermaid. So you guys saw that people actually worship Yamaya, who's an actual marine spirit from the marine kingdom, a mermaid, which is a literal nephilim. It's a half human, half demon, and they think it's good. If you've ever, if you've ever watched these videos on people who've had encounters with physical mermaids, they're very ugly. You see, Ariel and the Little Mermaid from Disney is literally Disney trying to desensitize mermaid worship to bring people into witchcraft. If you ever go to Islands of Adventure, Universal, that whole area, it is a whole altar. It's extremely demonic. They got Harry Potter land. It's all witchcraft. So all that stuff comes from Freemasonry, witchcraft roots, where they're trying to desensitize. And and romanticize worship of idols and worship of demons from a young age. That's why you got to be careful what you let your children see. But Yamaya and Haitian voodoo and in Santeria and African voodoo as well and all types of witchcraft is a literal demon they're worshiping. And, a, and if you go, if you if you study what's going on in Africa right now in a lot of these different countries, actual pastors are going to mermaids doing rituals, like literally onto demonic gods, doing rituals to get powers, to get actual demonic powers to use in their churches to make it seem like they're worshiping Jesus. It's the same thing that this witch is doing. They're just doing it on a higher scale. They're, they're, they're more incognito. Just like God, Yahweh sends his vessels into, into different camps to pull people out and to, and to be able to adapt. The devil takes what God does and perverts it. So he literally has, the de Satan, people claiming to be pastors who are Freemasons, who are getting their power from demons, who are, like, you see what I'm saying? Like, like I told you, witches and warlocks can, can tell you about the past. They have the gift to be able to hear in the spirit, the prophetic right they can hear in the spirit but they're hearing from demons so that's why you got to be careful who you follow i'm gonna tell you, i'm gonna say it again you will know that they're from god when they can tell you your future through a prophecy that's what it is foretelling the future and it comes to pass you see what i'm saying be careful who you follow who you're watching on youtube and what church you go to you will know them by their fruit you got it you have to have your own relationship with jesus to know his presence when you know god's presence anywhere you go you'll be able to sit there and be like okay God, are you here? And through worship, through just the word, through, through prayer night, whatever it is at the, at the church you're going to, you'll 
feel the presence of God that you know that you're familiar with when you seek him alone. You see, that's why you need to have a personal relationship with God. Don't depend on no pastor, no man, no woman of God, no, no church. Look, those things are for us. But if you don't have a relationship with God, you will get deceived, put under witchcraft, thinking you're following God. But because you don't want to seek God and you want to seek man, God will allow it to happen until you come to repentance. So again, seek God for yourself. I've seen videos and I've seen people like um, pastors casting out demons, like healings. They say it's the power of the Holy Spirit. Do you believe in the power of the Holy Spirit? Oh, of course. You have to You have to believe in all three, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So that you guys can see it. That, oh, the horseshoe? That, that I've seen this. So this is where I'm throwing in little, little nuggets. I'm just trying to stir up, stir it up a little bit to prepare her for the gospel, you see? And that's why I, I like to mention this to witches and warlocks, seeing pastors casting out demons, healing the sick. Obviously, those those are the things that the Lord uses me and our ministry to do, but I like to be incognito. I'm not lying, but I'm telling you, I've seen it on video to see if she's already aware of that. And look what she said, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. She believes in the Father, Son, Holy Spirit in her mind, but she hasn't accepted Jesus Christ in her heart yet. And that's why she doesn't have, she doesn't, she doesn't have a relationship with, with Jesus. She, she said it herself, she doesn't even feel worthy to go before him. We don't feel humble enough to go to straight to God to ask for our prayers. It's because she doesn't know her word. She hasn't been discipled. No one's told her. Does that make sense? In people's houses, it's supposed to bring protection, right? Yes. Like, or good luck. This is something that they love to put on top of in their home. It's for protection and it's already prepared. That's why it comes like this. But you could also get the horseshoe and the horseshoe like that. It's good for protection. And then do you do like the readings back there? Whenever you go to somebody's house, you go to a restaurant or you go somewhere and you see the horseshoe above the door, it's witchcraft. It's santeria. They're using it for protection. And what happens is because they're using it for luck and protection, it's already idol worship. It allows an, an actual altar to be set up in that area, a demonic atmosphere because of sin, idol worship, to allow demons to dwell there. So you'll see it. Sometimes you'll go to, you know, certain restaurants, you know, Asian restaurants, Mexican restaurants, Puerto Rican restaurants, you know, you know, uh, Haitian restaurants, African restaurants, even regular new age, you know, you know, American restaurants. And you'll see the horseshoe. Whenever you see that, you know, it's witchcraft and you should pray just Lord, in the name of Jesus. I pray you destroy this altar in Jesus name or preach the gospel to the person that owns the store or works there because they can probably get touched and throw that thing away. And then do you do like the readings back there? Yes. As you guys can see, this is an altar onto their de uh, and which for which um, I know we went to a Haitian voodoo spot and they had one specific deity that like was the main one. The main ones are always the the same the seven African powers. The, the seven but yeah, that's seven potencias you could call it, and it's very different than what we do, but it's also a little bit sim similar. Wow. The Virgin Mary. So, do you believe in the devil? You have to. I ask a lot of people this question. Like, as you guys can see, most of the, the witchcraft stores that I go to, they worship the seven African powers, the, the seven potencias. And you see how she said it's the main deities that are that she's worshiping over the statue of Mary, over the statue of Jesus, over all these Catholic things. It's the seven African powers because what happened is a lot of the voodoo comes from Africa, even in Haiti. The reason that Haiti began to do voodoo is because when the French brought the slaves from Africa, all different parts of Africa, they brought them on the ships to labor in Haiti on the island of, of I believe it's Hispaniola. And when they brought them there, all the African tribes came together, and they all had, they were all worshiping different deities. They were all actually in, in a divisive state. In Africa, they were against each other. There was wars, all that. When they came to Haiti, they came together, did a whole blood ritual of, of, of a black pig, drank the blood and summoned demons into their body through, through rituals and be and fought off the French through, through witchcraft, through voodoo, which you can get power, but it's demonic power that's going to lead you to where Haiti's at right now. Hades is, is in straight, bro, like they're, they're going through it. Poverty, murder, rape, gang wars, like that is the fruit of witchcraft. That's what happens. In the beginning, you want something. Let's say, for instance, it's money. Let's say it's power. Let's say it's dominion over your business or whatever it is. Yeah, you can go into your demons and you can worship them and do a sacrifice onto them and you'll get it. But then there's going to be a date. There's always a time for the devil when he says, it's time now. And he's going to take everything back and kill you and your whole bloodline. So as you can see, most, most botanicas, they worship the seven African powers. And when I was in Haitian voodoo, I was told that Haitian voodoo, and I'm talking about from people who are in Santeria, Palo Mayambe, people who are in, um, in uh, Santa Muerte, I was told that Haitian voodoo is the strongest. 
it's the strongest and that's the number one and that's the way to go you see how you see how demonic this is and if you look at haiti it's the, right now it's the worst it's like one of the worst countries of poverty murder drugs all that it's bad man I ask a lot of people this question like angels and demons what are they doing it's a battle for I, for what you, though like, i don't what, know what? if you ever heard this but lucifer was actually an angel from god he was, a, he was an angel. Yeah, but he was so jealous of us that he he was always fighting with God. It's like, why do you love them? Why you always try to protect them? Wow. So then his jealousy, God banished him. And because God banished him because he loves us, he chose us over him because of his jealousy, he cast him down. He was the fallen angel. He was the first fallen angel. Didn't she say that Buddha was jealous too? But a lot of Catholic churches don't put him up there because he's a very jealous person too. You see what I'm saying? Pride. Isn't it crazy how she has a she has a form of truth? Like she knows some truthful things, but the deception that the enemy puts her into to where she to where she literally is like and this can I be real with you? She's a really nice lady. You know what's interesting too? On Halloween, we were evangelizing in Old Town. I actually saw her, her husband, and her child who are really, really nice. And I, they're probably watching this video and I wanna let you know, I love you. I love you so much, but you have to come out of this and give your life to Christ so he can give you true fulfillment. Cause I'm telling you, man, it's so sad how the, so many people are deceived and I was one of the main ones. I was in complete, utter deception. And God brought me out and filled me with the Holy Spirit. And now my life in Christ is amazing. And you guys are gonna see at the end of the video, I prophesied over that couple and I preached the gospel. So, so watch all the way to the end. Do you believe in hell and heaven? Of course I do. How do we make it to heaven? Well, that's a very hard question. What I believe is not only the Ten Commandments, because they are real, mm -hmm. it's hard to follow, and none of us It's, are it's actually impossible. impossible. But if you know God, and if you know our Lord and Savior, you know that He will forgive him, forgive you seven times seven. So like a relationship with Him. Mm -hmm. These are all like herbs, right? Yes. Those are Isn't that interesting? She has a little bit of an idea of how to make it to heaven, but doesn't know the gospel. And that's why I was so excited to preach the gospel, but I was being led by the Spirit on when to because right there I could have done it, boom. But the Holy Spirit told me to wait, which was very strategic of the Holy Ghost. That's why when I go into these witchcraft stores, I'm not alone. I'm with God, I'm with the Holy Ghost, and he's guiding me through the entire interview. But yeah, man, it's, it's so sad that she has an idea, but she doesn't know how to be saved, truly. You see what I'm saying? We're saved by grace through faith in the gospel of Jesus Christ, the power of God unto salvation. That is the true medicine. They're good for antibiotics, they're good for curing any kind of um, Disease. like diseases. I had a lot of people with gold stones come in, and I always recommend them the herbs that are good for to get rid of any cold stones, any wow. kind of things like that. And do you do rituals with them and then give it to them? So it's like... they Mostly the people that come and they are sick, I tell them that they could do rituals, but some people just wanted to feel better and they get, they get the herb. So this one, um, it's good for calming, it's good for headaches and congestion, but if you use it, it promotes a peaceful home, protection, it's good to for good business. It, if you carry it in your shoe, it's good to to like keep you protected. Okay, so you know? it has a physical um, benefit and also a spiritual. Yes, correct. You see, herbs are not demonic. Like if you drink ginger tea and lemon tea, or use herbs for certain things that you know sickness. Like let's say you have a cold and you and you and you get some herbs to make this drink and that drink. That's not demonic. You see how she said that some people come in just for the herb for their stomach ache or whatever it is. That's not wrong. That's God has given us those things with wisdom to be able to heal from certain things when we're dealing with things. Just like in the Bible, Paul told Timothy to drink wine for his stomach, not to get drunk. Back then, wine was so watered down, but wine was actually more pure than water because back then they didn't have a filtration system so whenever when people would whenever people would drink water because it wasn't filtrated they would get stomach issues and parasites and different things and the wine would actually help with that pain you see we're allowed to we're allowed to have to drink herbs and di or use herbs to cook and different things remedies that's fine it's better than pharmacia but it's when you do a ritual so what they do a lot of the times is they'll take the herbs and do a ritual which again is perversion of what god has made the devil cannot create all he can do is pervert so he'll use the good herbs that we're supposed to be using 
or drinking or eating for our bodies, which is not a problem, and he'll do it. He, and, and he'll take the herbs to do a whole ritual onto a demon. Here, give this herb to this demon and burn this and do it. That's when it becomes ritualistic idolatry, witchcraft, creating a demonic atmosphere, and that's when demons can dwell. Just like sage. I've eaten many times chicken that's made with sage, right? Sage chicken, chicken that's that's uh, uh, sage that's used for salmon or different things. There's no problem with that. Say, sage tastes good when you mix it with certain herbs and ingredients to make food, praise God. But it's when you take sage and think that if I go burn this sage and put my faith in this sage, this leaf that is gonna that if I burn it, it's gonna it's gonna protect me from demons. That's where it becomes wrong. The devil cannot create, he can only take and pervert. We don't need sage to cleanse our home. All we need is the presence of God, the atmosphere from heaven, and prayer, and the Lord will do it. Amen. And some people will say, oh, is burning incense wrong? Burning incense is not wrong if you like the smell. If you like the smell of certain incense, praise God. Ain't nothing wrong with frankincense smell or myrrh. Cool. If you want to burn incense for the smell in your home, just like a candle, just, just like someone who would spray Lysol or Febreze, no problem with that. But it's when you take incense and start getting spiritual with it, thinking, oh, if I burn this incense and this and this and then I'm going to create an atmosphere for, for, for this deity to come and that deity. You don't need that. That's when it becomes idol worship. That's when it becomes idolatry. The devil takes all the good things that God creates and perverts it because the smell of incense actually smells really good when you mix it with different things. It smells good, but when you start burning it for idol worship or protection, that's when you're already in idolatry. Bro, you can go take some fabuloso or some Lysol and try to go burn it for a deity and that's idolatry. You see what I'm saying? It's the heart behind it. It's the faith behind it. It's what are you putting your faith in? So it has a physical um, benefit and also a spiritual. Yeah. Yes, correct. Have you ever, like, I just, I've, have you ever seen like a, like a, like a, a vision or a dream of Jesus? Um, I haven't, but I do have my cousins that did, you know. They had an encounter with Jesus? It's like kind of like an encounter, but you can't really see the face. It's like a light. And it's like a light. And then like, oh, um, we had a, like two years ago, mm -hmm. my grandfather passed away and we weren't uncertain like where he was. And then my cousin calls me, he's like, oh, he went to heaven. I seen him get like into a bus or something. And then he went in through the gates and uh, he's peaceful and he was young again. Like she's seen him young again and we don't like in his remember prime, him yet, like in his prime. But we know pictures, you know, yeah. and we seen this picture and she's like, yeah, that's how I saw him. And he was holding a baby and it was like a baby. It's like, yeah. And was he was he Christian, too? He was. He was. He wasn't really a tarot card kind of person. You know, he used to heal with just touch, but then... Um, touch and prayer. Yes, touch and prayer. The Holy Spirit. You see, now it's getting good. Words and knowledge are flowing. She brought up the situation about her grandfather. Look at that. Her grandfather used to pray, and people would get healed by the power of the Holy Spirit praying in the name of Jesus, right? A Christian prayer but he wasn't in the tarot card. And he died and her cousins, God gave him peace by letting them know that he's in heaven. Look at that. And he worshiped Jesus, not tarot cards, not witchcraft. Ooh, it's about to get good, keep watching. So, but, he, but he didn't do any rituals? No, he didn't. Sometimes people get scared. And he was a person that he used to get scared. He used to get wow. scared of that presence. Wow. And they say that when you have that presence, it's kind of scary. When you have the presence of the Holy Spirit? Yes. Can I tell you something? I believe in the Holy Spirit. You see how the devil tries to put, use fear and incorporate it with the Holy Spirit like it's scary, like it's scary, like her grandfather had something that was scary. You see that? You know why? Demons fear the name of Jesus. They fear the Holy Spirit. Even demons believe and they tremble. This is an actual witch of this of this witchcraft store, this botanica, who is literally admitting that it's a little fearful when people have that presence, the presence of the Holy Spirit, to where they don't need to do a ritual for someone to get healed. Come on, man. This is good. This is exposing darkness. She's gonna be saved, and I hope that she watches this video with her family and she knows that this is nothing but love. I love you guys. What if I told you that I had an encounter with Jesus? Really? The reason I know about this stuff is because I used to be into it, like in, um, but I actually went to Haiti and all that stuff and New Orleans, never Mexico or something like that. But I, I do believe now that, that, like you said, Jesus is the way. It's crazy that you believe in Jesus. I've laid hands on people and prayed and they got healed. One lady, she had, um, she had a bunch of like diseases and she got healed. A lady, another lady could like, she couldn't walk. 
got to have a wheelchair. Can I pray for you? Yeah, sure, of course. Okay, let me see. I pray for Natalie, Lord. Her heart is so pure. It's just loving. The light on her is evident. Lord, I pray that you continue to guide her to truth, light, just like her grandfather. I pray that you heal her of anything right now that she might be dealing with also. I feel like you've been dealing with, like, you've been tired a lot lately. Is that true? Yes, that is true. You've been very tired and very, like, a lot of weight on your back. That is true. And when I was praying for you, did you feel something? Yeah. What did you feel? Peace. I want to pray that the weight will come off of you. Can I pray for that? Of course. Thank you. I pray for my sister right now, in Jesus' name, that all the weight would come off of her back. Every unclean spirit, any demonic spirit that's been messing with her, in the name of Jesus, come off of her back right now. Come off of her mind. Come off of her body. Come off of her son. Come off of her, her husband. Come off of the store. In Jesus' name, may heavenly portals open up. Father, may you bless her. May you protect her. May she, may again, reveal, reveal light to her, Lord, because she has a good heart. In Jesus' name, amen. You sinned, and I've sinned. And one sin sends us to hell, according to the Bible, right? You cannot be perfect. But Jesus, like you're a spirit in a body, Jesus came as an all-powerful spirit. Jesus is God, came into a body. He came into a body and lived this life, this game of life that we live and never sinned. And he did it to be a perfect sacrifice. Because in the Old Testament, they would sacrifice animals. Because blood, like if you were sick right now and you didn't know what was going on and you went to the doctor, they would check your blood to find out everything. Because there's life in the blood and sin is death. So blood wipes out sin. But in the Old Testament, they kept doing it and doing it. And they were getting like, man, like when is the Messiah coming? And the prophets would be he's coming he's gonna they would wait but then event finally when he came born of a virgin he learned as a, as a young boy he had to poop pee go to school learn everything never sinned 30 years old the holy spirit came upon him and he got baptized in power and he went from city to city casting out demons healing the sick raising and he said greater works will you do if you believe in me and then he finished everything that the prophet spoke about which is the messianic prophecies and he went up on the cross died he said it's finished because he beat every principality and power then he was buried and he rose and because of the rising literally he he overcame death because adam and eve when they sinned they allowed death into the world they only knew good in the garden but that tree allowed them to know evil like god so god came so we can be like him and all we have to do is follow him and believe that he did die he was buried he did rose and repent and turn away from all other wickedness and sin and turn to him and, and we'll, we received the holy spirit when i received the holy spirit i got i was in my apartment alone and i never forget it. I got hit, knocked to the ground. I demons started coming out of me. I got healed of a disease I had for nine years. I, and I did a lot of a lot of um, herbs and different things, a lot of witchcraft. And I and I couldn't. Nothing healed me. But then I, he healed me like, Phew, and I it, I didn't believe it. And then I started eating foods and my food wasn't coming up. And I was like, what the heck? I got healed. And he's the highest power. And you believe that too. And the Lord just wants us all to know that you know. He's the only way. He's the truth and the life. I just bless you and your husband. You're a nice, you seem like a nice guy too, man. You have a very um uh, a leader a leader. You're like a leader. Like you can lead well. You do, man. You do a great job because you actually do care and you protect the family. And um I believe the Lord likes that about you, bro. And you're and you're a very um loving wife as well. And your son is blessed. And I believe the Lord is gonna take to do the same thing that we all need. Take us more on this journey and show us more truth. Cause like that's all I'm looking for more is just truth, 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 and light. You know what you're called to be? A prophetess. Has anyone ever told you that? No, not at all. You are called to be a prophetess and you're actually called to be a healer. Can I be real? You don't need none of this to heal the sick. You can lay your hands and people will get healed by the power of God. God has called you to be a leader in this end times. Because you're very spiritual, the Lord's going to use you. God wants to take you deep, like higher. Soon what's going to happen is he's going to start, he's going to reveal himself to you. Jesus Christ is going to reveal himself to you in a dream. You're going to feel like, whoa, and you're going to be like, yo, this is crazy. And God's going to take you to a new level. And you're called to be an apostle. You're a builder. You're like a, you're, you're, you're one that would travel and build. You want to build and cast out demons and, 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 and preach the word. Did you know that? Apostle, prophet. That's what you guys are called to be. That's how me and my wife are, apostolic and prophetic. My wife is very, because she was raised in Haitian voodoo and all that, so very spiritual. She gets so many dreams, it's crazy. And it all comes to pass. It's, it's scary. Like, it's like, what yeah, the heck? And that's scary. like like you. It is scary because... Is your, wife, is your wife like that? <laughs> I had dreams sometimes of like I wouldn't go to sleep because I had dreams of my family. Like, I seen my grandfather die before he died. And, and then he died. And then he died. You have, a, you have the gift of the prophetic. In, in Christianity, there's nine gifts, and one of them is the prophetic. It's like the same attack I get, you get, which is anger. Am I right? He's angry. He's always angry. <laughs> yeah, it's anger, but you know what it comes from? It's, it's from the rejection of the past, just like the father wounds, brother wounds, like just like not healing it. I had to get deep and actually let the, let the Lord take me and, show, and bring me back. Man, I got delivered, man. I was crying like a baby. The Lord's going to do that for you, bro, because he loves you. I appreciate you guys, for real. Bless you. And can I pray for you, too? So I pray right now. What's your name? 
Joshua. Father, I pray like Joshua, he'll be, like he's a warrior, Lord, just like Joshua. I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you would bless him, that you would protect him. I pray that any anger and rejection he might be dealing with, Lord, you heal him. You bring him back, Lord, and show him so he can be healed and delivered, Lord. Thank you, Father, for this man who's a builder. He's a leader of his family. He's a good man, Lord. He cares. He provides. Bless him in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you guys, man. <laughs> you have an amazing day. You see, I gave them exactly what they need. I gave them the gospel. I told them my testimony. I gave them words and knowledge. I prophesied over them. Um, and I told them that they don't need any of this to heal the sick. They don't need any of this. You see, you got to be wise as a serpent and gentle as a dove, right? And I believe this video, they're going to watch it because I, um, their younger son did subscribe to my YouTube channel. Shout out to you, my brother. And I'm going to say this again. Very loving couple just in deception like I was. And the Lord loves you and he wants you to repent of the witchcraft. You don't need it. I know it's hard. I know you have a whole business. You've invested so much money. But the Bible says anything that you give up in this lifetime, it will bless you a hundred times fold in this life and the life to come. Anything you sacrifice for the Lord, he'll bless you in this life and the life to come a hundred times fold. When I came to Christ, I had to give up a lot of income that I was making off, off, off of drugs, the woman, this, the lifestyle I was living. I had to give it up. I sacrificed it for Jesus. And man, I'm telling you, it is so worth it. You guys are seeing the beginning of a hundred times fold in my life. And let me tell you something. I don't desire the things I did in the world, like money and fame and, and, and this. No, I actually de de desire a deeper relationship with God. And all those things can be added on to you when you don't love it, when you don't care. That's when God can trust you because he knows that he's the forefront of everything. So woman of God, man of God, and I say that prophetically, we are in Apopka. You guys know this. Come to our church. I would love to have you come and see you. Give your life to Christ. He loves you so much. Get deliverance from demons. Get healing from anything you need. Get baptized, filled with the Holy Spirit. And man, I promise you, it'll be so worth it. And then we can get on a podcast and talk about you know, how your walk is after everything, man, that would be powerful, but only if it's real. And also after time where we see fruit. So anyways, God bless you. I honestly forgot your guys' names and I'm not going to mention the name of the Botanica. I'm just going to say the Lord is good. Jesus loves you. I'm glad that we didn't have you, your faces in the interview. Um, you guys did agree for the interview, which you guys know. And yeah, man, I love you guys. So body of Christ, what we're going to do is we're going to pray for this family. Again, very loving family. I believe in their heart. They really believe in what they're doing and they're just in deception, just like I was. What got me out of the, out of the deception was prayer, the truth being revealed to me at the right timing. And the prayer is what really moved things in the realm of the spirit. Because remember, we don't focus on the physical, we focus on the spiritual. So let's just pray. Father, we pray for this family, Lord, for this man, this woman, and their child, their young boy. We pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Lord, that you would reveal yourself to him, that you would show up in her dreams like, like you showed me, Lord that the prophetic word will come to pass in your name, Jesus. We pray, Lord, that you would send angels upon angels, legions of angels, to protect them, minister to them, guide them to the truth, Lord. We pray in Jesus' name, according to your word, Father, that no one comes to the Son unless you draw them in. We pray, Father, that you would draw in this entire family, Lord, in Jesus' name. Father, we pray against all demonic interception any demonic spirit that's trying to stop their salvation we rebuke you in the name of jesus we pray father god in agreement with the prayers of her grandfather who operated in healing lord we thank you for his his ministry while he was here on earth lord we pray that generational blessing over that entire family lord everybody may they be used to be the forerunners in their family to wipe out the bloodline curses lord and for the people to come out of idolatry and witchcraft and come to yeshua but we thank you lord that those who agree with this prayer right now all over the world bring power lord because the bible says where two agree on one thing every word is established in heaven so lord we thank you that this agreement in prayer this unity in prayer this prayer chain around the world will bring this family to christ in jesus mighty name amen look i'm not going to say the name of the family i honestly don't remember and if i did I, st I still wouldn't say it for the family i met at the botanica i love you again we don't hate the people it's the deception you know, I was in deception. I came out and I'm telling you, it's the best decision I ever made. You can go look up my testimony. Just type in Richard Lorenzo Jr. testimony. There's multiple social media, out, out, social media outlets that have my testimony. Go watch it. Jesus loves you so much. Guys, if you came in agreement and you prayed, I want you to comment down below. I come in agreement in Jesus name and say a prayer for them. Also in your secret place, continue to pray for them. Put them on your prayer list because man, when they come to Christ, how powerful would it be if they, if they came and testified? about the goodness of God and what this video and that encounter did for them. God bless you guys. Remember, keep exposing darkness, spreading that light and that love in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.
And don't forget, subscribe to the channel, comment, like the video, and share it with all your friends and family.